This is Julia Whitup with the Creative Journey, and we have with us this morning Yvonne Figueroa. I'm not sure I said that right. I think you I said, said it, right. it perfectly well, Julia. Okay, and he's going to be talking about the Forgiveness Code. So, can you tell us what that is? Sure, Julia. Uh, it's my experience. First, my books come on my own experience. Uh, as most people look into my biography, I'm a 72-year-old retired pediatric academic surgeon. And now I've been practicing almost for 12 years integrative medical care and acupuncture Chinese or style, oriental style. During this period of time in my life, I, I started to find myself again after 62 years when I was looking at the mirror in myself. I looked at the mirror, I didn't see a happy person. And then I looked at myself and then I learned that I was not happy because I had been living somebody else's experiences in my life. I let others rule my life and make my choices for me. And then suddenly I realized that it's about time at 62 years old, I had to change my ways. I had to grow up. So then I started doing that. And it was a growth process being learning that most of the wisdom I have looked and studied for years was within the reach of my own self, within my heart, within my soul. And that I had to open my right brain, the person which, that part of me, which is intuitive. And I have uh, suppressed for many years. I put that in my book. And then I started finding some beautiful things that in the past I called my shadows, the shadows. So basically in this book, which is the third of the spirituality series, the first one was Spirituality 101 for the dropouts of the School of Life. We discussed that a while ago. The second is Spirituality 1.2 spirituality for the disconnected of the School of Life. And the third one, the forgiveness code, finding the light within our shadows. This is one of my heartfelt books. I enjoyed it so much writing it and learning. As I read it, I can't believe in the wisdom I was able to channel in the book and how much is the help the patients who already read it. The book has been out maybe two weeks. And I have the great pleasure to announce that the Kindle version has reached number three and the bestseller status in the No Age group. And right now it's number nine, it went down. It's been cycling up and down, but I'm on there with the biggies competing for that little spot. And I'm just a nobody in, in this universe, according to uh, writers. And so I do want to share that happiness with my uh, fellow here. And just want to let you know that in the future, you will be able to find this book and Kindle under the title for the introductory price of 99 cents. Now this book is $15.99, the basic book. So this is a good opportunity for people to learn about my book, share it, and enjoy what I'm trying to share with them. But let's talk about, about the book just a little bit. If you want to interrupt me, you are allowed to, you're the big boss, and <laughs> ask some questions about that I, that I leave out. The, this is a book the basic rights of an inner journey. I see our universal journey as one that's really inwards. And it's a creative and discovery process of that beautiful universe that was created spontaneously with the big bang or the big joyful bang of love. Since then, our creator, which is our mind, and I call it this book, the magical mirror, the beautiful magical mirror of our minds, and our minds are also magical mirrors. I picked this choice because many years ago, my love teacher of the Tibetan tradition, Kenshin Pauden Sharab Rinpoche, a great self chain master, told me, Ivan, don't take it so hard on yourself. Learn to see life that is a magical display of the mind. And at that time, I failed to understand the exact words of those the wisdom behind the words. And now many years later, I'm writing what I learned from the magical display of my mind. He told me, never take life too seriously. Never take it as the only thing you have. Take it as an opportunity of learning the experience of that experience without feeling that there is a punishment or a wrong aspect of it. There's nothing wrong with the universe. It's just that we don't understand the beauty 
the inlays, the layers of beauty that it implies of what we're seeing and we judge. From the Bible, it says, you know, do not look in Spanish. I don't know how to learn, but do not look with the, I think the, uh, the, uh, the eye. Do you remember the English? I remember I'm Spanish already. Do not look for the little uh, uh, cinder in the eye when you have a big uh, something in you. I don't remember in English. I know in Spanish, no mires las, eh, la, las pajas en el ojo del otro cuando tienes en tu propia una viga. That's from the Bible, and it's a beautiful saying. You know, don't look into others' defects when you have a bigger one yourself. And that has been my learning experience because I've been a very critical, both of myself and those people around me. So this book is a beautiful imaginary journey within our mind. And in this journey, we start as a warrior of the light, or the light warrior, as a search, and as we go forward, and we discover the different dimensions of this mind, we start creating as we separate from our source. We start feeling like a little baby that you start walking away from your mom and you walk five steps, then you look back, and then you go back to your mom and run again, and, and you go away from it. At the beginning, when we start this journey, we become fearful, and we go look at our source, what happens? We take too many steps, and at one time, suddenly we look around, and there is no mom. And for the first time, I disconnect from the source of love, and then I feel alone. It is at that time that man makes the single mistake of creating a false creator. That false creator is a God-like for ourselves. It's called the ego. And it's the ego that creates parallel universes in which what we call the law of cause and effect appears, or the karma. And then, because we have to create our own process and the learning process, we don't have the wisdom already obtained by the life source who comes, who created us. So then we have to learn like little baby steps by mistakes. As we go forward, we make mistakes. We get to judge ourselves and feel guilty when we make mistakes, and then we start making false reflections in the magical mirror of our mind, which is a perfectly beautiful image of myself. And then I start seeing the shadows, the distortions in my mirror. So as I go forward, as I look at this universe, I discover new things. As I learn and make mistakes, I start making emotional creations of my mind. And then the emotions are the creation of my fears. The emotions will take us in a trip which will always give us fear because we don't know the final result of what's going to happen. We have to go by the free will of trial and error. And then when we make mistakes, we judge ourselves because we didn't do the right thing compared to other things we've done before. Those are our shadows. These shadows and prisoners in worlds in which lives the, the experience of living, which implies that you're born, and you die. You are young and you're old. You become older, you make mistakes, you become sick. So then we are in the full cycle of samsara as the cause of our own ego. And the ego is the cause of separation from our source. And then we lose our memory of where we come from. In my book, I mentioned that all of us initially are connected, interconnected by universal language or symbols which at the beginning united us automatically when we, we automatically could communicate with our words with each other. We knew in our minds what the other one needed. We knew what it was good for the whole hologram of the experience and we acted according to that. As we separate from the source, what happens is we lose the memory or the collection in our programs of the language of love or the universal language that connects us and allows us to communicate with each other. And then what happens? We start to create our own languages. That is reminds me of the symbolism in the Bible when the Tower of Babel was done. The Tower of Babel was created by man trying to get back to heaven. What happens with men is that when they left heaven and they were told, okay, here you go, you got to explore that beautiful creation we made for you. And men didn't want to do it. Let's do it. I don't want to go back. I want home. I want to go back. I want the, the easy life. So the men did not want to go back. So they started making a tower 
which was connected with the original language. They could work together because they had the original language. And then the creator was too smart for them. I said, uh uh, this tower is not going to go up. You got to earn your own trip back. You got to earn your return trip. You got to earn it by discovering the universe. So then we are really exiled for a while until we do the whole living experience. This exile is what really creates our experience that we're living apart from our creator. But we will go back when we do the whole experience and remember the way back by finding the forgiveness code. The forgiveness code is a secret behind my book in which we have to understand that everything we have done in our experience of living has done according to the capability on our free will at the moment. All the discoverers of this beautiful universe are not at the same level, at the same level of development, spiritual development. We are different schools. That's why I say that the universe is a school of life in which we are all at different levels in the same classroom. Classroom. We are from kindergarten all the way to postgraduate degrees, and we're in within one room trying to learn the experience with having a single teacher. So then the only thing that we have is the curriculum. The curriculum is patience, perseverances, attempting, and knowledge. So then we have to learn what we have according to our needs, and then we have to share this experience. And then that way we make the hierarchy of teachers and students. Then we become all students and teachers of each other. The more advanced, the ones that have gone above us will teach the lower ones, and then you pass it on to the lower students. You have to be patient and compassionate for those slower learners because we were also slow in learning. And somebody was compassionate with me, and then by similarity, and then when we learned that we're all family connected through the uh, language of love, then we have the patient with others coming up. So in this school, that is the main learning experience. Yet. Yeah. On the way of learning, we have the free will to do it right or do it wrong. That's a learning experience. I keep telling my patients that the wisest beings are those that have made more mistakes. And they laugh. And they say, well, then I'm going to be very wise. I say, yes, me too. I'm very wise. So making mistakes, I write in my book, are lessons of love. So when I look at karma, at the famous law of cause and effect, I call it the law of love or law of dharma. Because all experiences in karma are dharmic. They are for you to learn and correct your disequilibrium, to go back into the center of your movement, to go into your path. So whenever I have an experience that makes me suffer, I then realize I am being the, given the opportunity to correct myself. It's a lesson of love. I tell my patient to understand that. When you have a little kid running around your kitchen, he's a three years old, he doesn't understand what a kitchen is and he can burn, and he's gonna touch the stop stove at the top, he's gonna burn, you go, you slap him a couple of times in the hands, and he cries and he doesn't understand why is he being hit. It'll take a couple of years later or three years later to understand that that was a lesson of love. But at that time, he finds that is not fair. My dad is hitting me. My mom is hitting me. This is not fair. Sometimes in life, we are that manner. When we reach the suffering experience, of, oh, this is a punishment. I don't deserve this. Why did this occur to me? You ask yourself. And then after a while, you understand that the right question is not why. The right question is what for. What am I doing this for? What is the meaning in this in my life? How can I improve with this process of learning experience of love, or what we call lessons of love? When we start doing this, that is basically the forgiveness code. Because you're understanding that all that you've done was done without your really knowledge of the intention that you had. There was a lack of ignorance. That's what the Buddha said. And that's what Jesus said. Forgive them for they do not know what they do. So basically, that is the forgiveness code. 
when you learn to understand that everything I've done in my life, for my lifetime, the mistakes I've done, I've done according to my own capabilities, I did the best. And if I did the best I could, I must be satisfied with my action. The fact that it was a mistake, if I accept it as part of my learning experience, I will correct it and I will never do it again. That is real wisdom. That is real living. And then when we use the forgiveness code to really understand that everything we've done in our life has been the best that we could, we start judging our past experiences and we stop judging the experience of others that have maybe done some damage to us and they have not understood their relationship with us. So basically, that is the forgiveness. And I think by practicing that in my book, I go into details that by finding my shadows, I got to go back and see them, understand them, and look at them. And I say in my book, one of my phrases, do not return with your shadows to the warrior of your shadows. Return with your light so he can see his own. Repeat. Do not return with your shadows to the warrior of your shadows. Return with your light so he can see his own. That's why I have hundreds of phrases in my book like that. And uh, what I like is there are no really bad people. They're just people who do not know yet they are good. There are no bad people. They're just people who do not yet they are good. Well, basically, I think I've given you most of what i reading in my book. Basically, it's... Uh, imaginary battle between the battle of the warrior of the shadows and the warrior of the light and it's structured in different levels to show how in our life we go through different battles they're the internal battles the most important my internal one with my with my shadows with my imaginary foes my dragons and then are the fights that we do with the shadows of other beings in our life it's a beautiful warfare uh, war episode and it's a learning experience because everything you learn here is love there's no spillage of blood there's only spillage of learning and perseverance anything you would like to ask me yeah okay. where could we get your book okay my book is available in amazon mm -hmm. at different levels paperback kindle and a hard cover uh, you can get the Kindle now within, I have it as special for the next couple of weeks at 99 cents. Now you guys go get it because this is a unique opportunity of a beautiful book. I maybe have it a couple more weeks at 99 cents. So this is time to share it. To download it, share it with other people. The name of the book is The Forgiveness Code, Finding the Light in Our Shadows, the main title Spirituality 103. Spirituality 103. Uh, the forgiveness code, find the light in our shadow, share it with people. It comes in Spanish for your Spanish speaking friends. Take a look at the Spanish version too. So ask me any question you want to know. Um, I talked I talk too much. Oh no, you were great. I, that was covered everything. It seems like, okay, it's the forgiveness code, finding the, finding, finding the light within our shadows, right? Finding the light, within our shadows. Remember, it, there, that's a beautiful experience. I say, the, there's no difference in the light and the shadows. They're just hues of light. The shadows are darker hues, the light are lighter hues. There's nothing wrong with shadows. Life cannot be, you cannot be happy if you have not gone through suffering. The, the, the Buddha thought of that. It's a contrast of living. But we tend to like, as human beings, to keep everything stable. Everybody likes stability. No, I don't want to change this. I don't want to change my life. This is perfect. I'm doing well. You want to change your job. You don't want to try new opportunities like me. I'm starting writing at 70 years old. And people say, you crazy? You've never written anything in your life. I said, well, if I learn to be a pediatric surgeon and do major surgery, I can learn to write. Mm -hmm. I'm very confident in myself. I'm very confident in myself. And uh, I, being number three, on the second day, of my book launching is a miracle. I know if you understand that. Number three, a new age spirituality. I could not believe it. That yeah. was how fast. And now I'm number nine today, but I'll be number one after I finish your program. <laughs> after all these people, 
read and download my book. I'll be number one. Then I'm going to take a picture of that in my screen and I put it in a little frame and I go give myself, tap myself, oh God, Ivan, you're so great. You're so great. That's not true. I'm not that way. What I'm going to say, this book is also, you have to see the reviews going to the site. There's many reviews of people. Where is your book. website? Well, uh, it's not on my website. I'm talking it's in my link to Amazon. It has my reviews. Oh. Okay. You can go to Amazon, you find the professional reviews. There are beautiful reviews of people like you and me who have read my book, and also professionals, artists, uh, painters, physicians, doctors have reviewed my book, and have given me hope that this book has a message. Remember, I channel information. This is not really my book. This is a book of the universe. And I wrote this book in three weeks, and it doesn't look like it's written in three weeks. You'll see it. Yeah. Uh, my first book took me a weekend. My, it gets more difficult. My second book took me two weeks. Maybe my fourth book will take me four weeks. <laughs> and, uh, and do you and have then, a website? Yes, I have a website. Uh, it's difficult because it's a whole name. It's Ivan Figueroa Otero MD. You're going to find the private within the uh, Amazon link. Ivan Figueroa Otero MD.com. It's going to be hard. Uh, it's a long name. We in Spanish we use both last names of the parents. Figure all my father, Otero, my my mom. And the Americans get confused and they think that Otero is my first name. Oh and awesome. so uh, yeah, it happens, you know. Yeah, they're not but, used ba to that. but but the message in this book is that guilt, I put that in my book. Guilt is a word that should be deleted from the dictionary. And the way to delete it is to use the code of forgiveness. So when we calmly look into ourselves, understand that everything we've done in our lives has been the right thing, even if it made us suffer, <laughs> it was the right thing. <laughs> and the, ex the experience, see what happens is, when you look back at your life, Julia, you know that. And you go back and you laugh at yourself, when you were 17 and 18 and those college days, oh my God, I was a really little girl, naughty little girl. And then you laugh at yourself and you, you control yourself and you criticize yourself and you understand that's what you had. <laughs> You've grown to be the Julia you are now because of those mistakes. Right. The beautiful Julia I have here, they have a beautiful picture of you in, the, in my front here. I can't <laughs> see myself. My little, big, my little camera is a little small, tiny one, so I don't see myself, which is good. <laughs> uh, but but anyway, Julia, it, it's guilt. Guilt is a word that should not be in the dictionary and should disappear. We just have to delete it. Go there and delete it. It doesn't exist. What we should put there is, uh, would be responsibility. Self-responsibility and co-responsibility. Self-responsibility for my mistakes, co-responsibility for the other's mistakes. You understand? Uh -huh. There's no, there's no way you can call yourself the blameless game here. Either play the blame game or the blameless. It's impossible. Since we're a beautiful holographic dimension of love, anything that happens in one part of my dimension affects the other. It's impossible. Right. Now, some some beings are not aware of that, but as you go forward and you awaken your spirit, you become more aware of your core responsibility. That's when we start making mistakes. Stop, stop, stop. I don't do it. I catch myself, uh-uh, Ivan, you had enough of that. Go away from that. Don't get yeah. into trouble again. And I don't want to dig myself out of that hole again. So <laughs> then you, and then you're aware that other beings, you're compassionate because then you are aware other beings have been through your process. Then you see yourself in their images. You see them as, oh my God, this is just the way I do it. So I can help my patients by explaining the way I did it. I tell them, okay, I'm going to tell you a story. You're not alone. I did all those things and a little bit more than you did. So <laughs> here I am. I'm, help, I'm helping you. And look at myself. I'm just a regular guy. Sometimes patients come to my office. My wife helped me here. And, and they tell me, Oh, your wife is so lucky to have somebody so wise as you living with her. And I start laughing out loud and tell them, you know, you better ask her, how is it living with me? 
<laughs> it's not that easy. It's not that easy because my shadows keep coming out every time. She reminds me of my mom. When she starts acting like a mom and I start to be like a little kid, I get really angry. I start saying things that I shouldn't do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just a human. I'm a kid. I'm a kid. I'm a human being. I'm a 72 to 73 year old kid. And I'm loving what I'm doing right now. Enjoying myself. And I really hope people enjoy my book and share their experience with me and pass it on because I only wrote this because the universe told me you better do something to help others. Good for you. Thanks so much for being with us today, Ivan. I enjoy myself. I hope, I really wish at some time I could get this link to share with other beings. If at some time you send me a little note. Yes, could you? I, if you yes. would go to youtube.com slash Julia Widdup. Okay. And subscribe, then okay. I let all my subscribers know when I upload. That's very good, Julia. Really, uh, Julia, uh, as major being all over the world, now I see your influence in England too. You're doing the opposite of what they did. They, uh, you're getting back to invade England now. They used to.